G'day guys. Today I'm going to go through my top 15 AFL draft power rankings from May and I'll sort them into a tier list just as a point of interest. Um, I'll go through by state sort of the breakdown. I'll go through by position the breakdown and I'll also give a bit of a quick feel into the strength of the mid-season draft. So there's some of the things to look forward to in this video. Okay, so here are my May AFL draft power rankings as you can find them on espn.com.au slash AFL. So if you want full profiles into how they all play and why I rate them as highly as I do, check out my power rankings there for all those details. But um, today I just want to go through, I guess, a stream of consciousness in a way and really, I guess, sort all the players into tiers. So my first tier, I've got players I'd consider with pick one. So... Um, I've got an interesting group of seven here, and I guess the players that of interesting dimension. So I'll start with Ashcroft. So Ashcroft, for those that aren't aware, Brisbane fans, be aware, he's a father-son. So um, you've got an absolute bargain and sensational midfielder there. Um, look, I had him before the start of the season as pick one with a fair bit of separation, but... Um, yeah, look, I'm starting to see some players really creeping up, catching up. I don't really see the separation I saw at the end of last year. So I think it's a real conversation as to who was the real pick one this year. So um, that's something to be aware of. It's not a one horse race by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but players that are probably a bit unique to my order that I guess I want to bring up. So Tom Scully, I don't get the sense that people will all necessarily universally rate him as a top five talent, but He's one certainly on performance that I've found absolutely exceptional in the Sandful under 18s. So, um, yeah, just absolutely dominating, almost like a Max King 2.0 in a respect. Maybe not quite on that level, but um, it's Max King-esque and just the rate of development's been extreme. And that's one of the principles that I'm really big on, where you want the production, you want the attributes, but you also want that rate of improvement. And with Scully, we've had that at an exponential rate. So that's really exciting there. So um, that's why I'm really high on him and why I slightly prefer him to a Lemmy, who really Lemmy, look, we haven't seen much of this year. But um, when you look at the sheer rate of improvement, you've got the additional height with Scully as well. So that's exciting. But the performances on the board as well, just absolutely exceptional. Versus Lemmy, who hasn't played much, hasn't done much in that sort of brief stint. But of course, he was terrific last year. Um, but other than Scully, the other unique that I guess I want to bring your attention to is um, Filippo. So he's one I actually liked and wrote about last year on ESPN. And um, yeah, basically he's a tall midfielder who is really good both midfield and forward. So he's that sort of strong marking, good goal kicking forward, good skills, moves really well, but he can go through the midfield, find it and win it. So um, when you've got that mix of attributes, look, that's really exciting. And he really deserves to be in this top sort of, I guess, group and really pick one contention almost. So, and look, he's someone where he won't universally even be inside people's top tens at this point, but I really think he's deserving. And look, it was great last year, but he's still improving further this year and playing really good footy. So I want to give him his props there. So, and in this top seven group, so I've been high on the SA prospects and of course you've got the three here so but you do have three victorians as well so it's not entirely unbalanced in that respect but as i said in one of my previous videos the crop from sa best i've ever seen from victoria the worst i've ever seen so um it is important for those that haven't seen that to note that so the next group down so i consider these guys all as sort of being worth top 10 consideration without necessarily being picks that I'd want to take inside the top 10. And look, there's a couple from this list, and I'm not going to specify who because it'll spoil my power rankings for next month, but there's a couple from this group here that I'd actually probably bump up a group. So um, yeah, for those who are regular um, junior and state league footy watchers, well, you will have seen some recent pretty strong performances from a few of these boys. So um, watch out for who might be some of those risers who next month I'll probably be bumping up a tier realistically based on what they've been doing lately. So um, there's some exciting stuff there. But again, in this group, you've got the three SA prospects. So that's phenomenal. You've got the two WA and the one Victorian. So um, we can really see in this top 13, really the dominance of the South Australians with the six in there. So um, that's really something quite extraordinary. And then in every draft that 
sort of top of mind I can think of, well, Victorians dominate the draft. They make up more than half of each draft. So um, it would be really staggering if the draft worked out this way. So, um, yeah. And then the last two that I had inside the top 15, and look, there are others I sort of had to consider, and certainly in this next month coming up, I will be considering ahead of these two. Um, Keeler, I, I may as well mention these two. So Keeler is one where he could be the most talented of all the key forwards in this draft, but he hasn't really put it together to date this year. So, um, look, I'm really looking for quite a bit of improvement from him. And if we see it, look, he can be a top 15 pick. Um, and I should also mention that, um, he's available as a next gen Academy for Adelaide, but he would have to be outside the top 40 to, um, be someone Adelaide could match. So um, that's sort of the problem there. So look, Adelaide could just draft him and that's all well and good. But um, yeah, that's the thing to note there. Um, but yeah, look, great talent, but we need to see him put it together. So at risk of dropping outside the top 15 with a few others that I'm looking to probably move up my draft board in the next month. And then you've got Nick Madden. So um, you've got a GWS um, Academy prospect here in Madden. So um, they'll be getting another tall, big, strong-bodied Ruckman. So it's like getting another sort of Braden Proust <laughs> on that list. So, um, yeah, just real physical presence, really exciting player. So, um, and again, in terms of looking at the uniques, I, I should actually go through uniques here as well. The one that would be considered the unique possibly would be um, Dowling. So Billy Dowling. So, um, yeah, just had a phenomenal start of the season in the Sandful under 18s and one you've really got to watch and um yeah get behind he really should be in everyone's first round or top 20 I would be saying um but in those that I've spoken to he's not universally regarded nearly as highly as I rate him which I find a little surprising off the games that I've seen of him both last year and this year so um yeah we'll have to see how that goes but um yeah I'd I'm still probably going to keep him in the top 10 unless others really sort of move past him. So, um, yeah, they're just, again, sort of stream of consciousness thoughts there. Um, and then moving on to the breakdown. So out of that top 15, so we've got four from Vic Metro. So Vic Country lift your game. But, of course, there are reasons behind that over the last few years, obviously. Um, you've got South Australia with a seven. Phenomenal for South Australia. Congrats, guys. Um, three from WA, that's pretty solid. So good group there from WA. And then, of course, you've got the one from New South Wales. So they won't be complaining either um, with that outcome there. So, um, and then you've got the breakdown by positional zones. So I've got here three key forwards, one key defender, two rucks. So, um, yeah, look, they're pretty sort of big chunks of groups there with those groups there. Um, seven mids, look, that's pretty common. Normally I'd say I'd have quite a few more because I tend to have a relative bias towards midfielders, just believing that clubs don't take good midfielders early enough, ultimately. Got the one forward and the two mid forwards. So, um, yeah, look, usually you might have a touch more than this, but it's sort of around that sort of mark that you'd expect, roughly. So, um, but yeah, look, in terms of positional breakdowns, look, it's good draft for tools as we're seeing here but the rest of the draft look i'd say it's sort of in that below average category would be a fair summation um so and then for my upcoming june rankings so spots 16 to 18 i'm pretty well settled on and a few of those might even be inside my top 15 so watch out for that um but this group here um two of them so they're mid-season eligible and should be picked really so and for a quick strength indicator, I've currently got four inside my top 20 who are mid-season draft eligible. So that's a very quick feel around that. Um, but yeah, look, upcoming ESPN pieces. So I've had a busy year. I haven't really sort of, I guess, put up my hand to do too much this year. But um, with the mid-season draft coming up, look, there are sort of, I guess, the regular pieces that I do want to churn out to really provide for the community. So I've got here, firstly, a mid-season draft top 20 rankings. So... Um, as a point of interest, so I've said here again, so you've got the four mid-season draft eligible prospects inside my top 25. And look, I'd probably have another sort of couple inside my top 30 or 40. So um, look, there are quite a few numbers that are really quite worthwhile for the mid-season draft. So um, yeah, there is going to be the possibility as with last mid-season draft to, for clubs to secure more long-term pieces. So 
um, do watch out for that. So then I've got here mid-season draft who each club should pick. So um, yeah, that one, assuming I've got sort of the time over the next few weeks, um, I'll produce that. Then we've got the ESPN podcast. So I'll cover some mid-season draft content, probably provide a more general draft update as well in there. I've got a mid-season draft review. So once the draft is done the night of, I'll um, basically do a review of the players, what I think about the drafts and sort of the usual there. And then, of course, I've got the June AFL draft power rankings, which I'll be extending to a top 20 for you guys. So, um, yeah, hopefully that'll be enjoyable for you guys at home and hopefully it generates a bit more discussion and maybe gets a few more, maybe even unique names out there. We'll have to wait and see. Thanks for watching, guys. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future updates. And in the comments section below, if there's any juniors or state leaguers that you think deserve to be inside my top 20, let me know. I'd be interested to hear some of your favorite players. And if there's any surprises from my top 15, let me know. That'd also be interesting to hear. But um, anyway, guys, see you in the next video.